This is a fabulous turnout, and um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. McLeod, the Superintendent of Schools. Um, so excited to be here tonight, and I guess to begin by saying, first of all, it's my pleasure to do the opening and to welcome all of you. Um, this has been a year, a year of planning to get to this point, and as I was thinking about tonight, I was comparing it to the school, right, that we've been also working on, um, the Marathon School that's into, I see a teacher back there cheering, um, you know, we're into the fifth year of planning for, for that. But the big difference with this project compared with that has been the truly authentically collaborative um, work across town departments. Because the, although of course we have the early elementary school building committee and everybody's collaborating, this project it really is a grassroots project of, of people coming together, listening to the community, thinking about what it is that, that we want and the vision that we have for our, for our athletes. And, but I think even more importantly than that is the vision that we have for our town. And when you sit at the table, hours and hours and hours of meetings have truly taken place with the people who you're going to be hearing from tonight, um, really working together across departments to see how we can support our athletes. Um, and so it's a very exciting time for us to be here. Tonight, we're, you're going to be provided with an overview, a brief overview. Uh, again, this is this has been there's there's a lot more information than we can provide tonight because tonight is about hearing from you we are really here because we want to your opinions we want to understand your questions we really want to understand your viewpoints each of you represents viewpoints for, for people in town many other people who couldn't be here tonight and I know that we're also it, we're also being televised so that's awesome um, so those of you who are watching please make sure that you provide your input because that's the purpose of the forum um, so again thank you for being here I'm going to turn it over to our athletic director D King Thank you for the warm welcome, Kathy. And um, I'll just echo Kathy's welcome. So excited to see how many people are here tonight. Um, and guessing that everyone's coming here from a different place in a different role, maybe having um, different questions, differing opinions. And we just appreciate your investment in the process that we've gone through so far and, and where we're at in this potential project. Appreciate that you're here to learn more and to express thoughts, questions, concerns, support, whatever that might be. So just everyone's super busy and we recognize that and are very grateful that everyone came out here tonight to to learn a little bit more. Um, so I just want to start really quickly by talking a little bit about our subcommittee um, and so I'll first touch a little bit on the timeline of, of sort of where we began. Um, last summer, the school committee approved uh, the funding for a feasibility study to be conducted, which you'll hear about later um, from Kathy Hervel, who's here from Gale Associates. Um, after that feasibility study was approved, we had a subcommittee established of a number of different people from the community in a variety of roles who have come together, as Kathy said, for so many meetings, so many hours of time that they're donating to work collabor collaboratively to hopefully create something that will be a great asset to our community. So I just want to take a moment to acknowledge all the people who have donated their time. Um, so obviously Dr. McLeod uh, as our superintendent, Evan Bishop, our high school principal, Jean Birchman, who is on the school committee and also a parent, John Graziano on the school committee, also a parent. Tim Person, our new director of buildings and grounds. John Schwartz, who is a community member and who has been spearheading our marketing and public relations end of things. Ed LaFleur is a community member and has a specialty in construction, so has been able to contribute on that front. Amy Mick, who I'm guessing many of you know through um, youth soccer. She's a community member, a parent, and does a lot of communication, has also been wonderful in supporting us and our, some things that have come up this season, as I'm sure you heard, um, where we've had to relocate fields a little bit. So she's been wonderful in um, helping with Fruit Street. Um, Jim Vallis, who's a member of the community, a parent, and also specializes in finance. Um, Kelly DiPaolo is a member of the community at large. Brian Herr is not a voting member of the committee, but is a liaison for the Board of Selectmen. Pam Waxlax for appropriation. Dan Terry from Parks and Rec. 
Al Rogers, our former director of Buildings and Grounds, also a community member and brings years of expertise to, to the table when being able to talk to us about just the history of our fields. Um, and then we're also in the process of replacing our capital improvements liaison. So um, as you can see from that long list, I just wanted to take a moment and at least share with you who has been part of these ongoing conversations and also to sincerely thank these people for all of the time and effort that they have put in. They all have so many different responsibilities and are there meeting after meeting offering such valuable contributions. So sincerely appreciate that and wanted to acknowledge them. And as I said, Kathy Hervel from Gale Associates, who um, is the engineering company that we've been working with, is here and you'll hear from her a little bit later. So our agenda for tonight, um, we want to, just so that you kind of understand the format of this forum, we'll start with our presentation to begin with. I'll talk a little bit about the background. Kathy will get into some more of the specifics of the proposed project. Then we'll have some breakout sessions um, and we'll explain to you what those are. And then we'll regroup together to just do quick summary of some of the themes or questions that came up and certainly answer any questions that um, you as as the community might have. You'll also see on your chairs, um, we tried to do a, a quick sheet um, or a few sheets just to give you an idea of some of the questions that have come up, some of the background and also a timeline. Additionally, there's a card with pens. If you have questions, um, there will be a box circulating that you can put your questions in. Um, and, and it's just another way for you to be able to ask those. And if we'll have some in compiling those during the breakout sessions. So just wanted to explain that a little bit. So we'll talk about why the committee feels that we need turf now, what the project phasing is, some of the field use and demands that have been part of what has led to this process, a little bit about the project timeline, the current existing conditions, what the proposed project is, the phasing of the project, which I know there's certainly some questions about that, some specifics on the turf system, the lighting, the different community coordination of how the usage of these fields would be managed, um, and then the questions and breakout sessions, and then next steps. So that's our agenda for this evening. So hopefully you learn a lot, and if you have questions, they get answered. And if it's something that we need to work on, then we're committed to doing that. As Kathy said, we are here to hear from you to get your input. So thank you for being here. So why turf fields now? A lot of different reasons from our perspective um, that, that we could share, but I think the first one that comes to mind from that we've all talked about is that the need that we have for field space currently exceeds the availability that we have. Um, so in a future slide, you'll see a little a chart about the field's demands and usage, um, but we are at this point outsourcing to Fruit Street, using gym space at times where we would hope that our student athletes would be outdoors. Um, and because of our lack of turf, we are limited by daylight, uh, which certainly just is, is a limiting factor, as you know. So oftentimes we have to be done with games practices by 6, 6.15, um, unless we're using field three, which can't be used for a number of our sports, as you know. So just the need for the field space, which exceeds the availability, is the first thing that comes to mind. Um, this would also allow for increased availability of all the facilities. I mean, it's something that we know as a community, and for those of you who have kids that are in youth programs or in the middle school or the high school, um, we all of our facilities are constantly being accessed, and this would um, from all different places, not just the high school athletics. So this would hopefully provide an opportunity for all of our facilities to be used, but for it not to feel tightened and constrained all the time. Um, certainly the extension of seasonal field usage, um, New England weather, right now we're very lucky being in the middle of October and it's 70 degrees out. Um, yesterday it was a little brisk, but as you know, depending on rain, snow, ice, that limits the usage that we can depend on for our fields and many other schools for example in March are having their tryouts outside we have to go either to Fruit Street or into a gym which doesn't simulate certainly um, an authentic athletic experience if it's a baseball or a lacrosse or something like that um, so it would certainly extend that seasonal field usage because other towns are utilizing their fields their turf fields when it's raining we're canceling games, which is just 
a huge bummer for our kids and athletically certainly limits the their competition schedule they ha- we're squeezing five games into a week and different things that just it's not the best atmosphere for the kids in terms of giving them adequate practice rest so that's one of the athletic reasons that the field usage is really helpful but then also certainly it would allow for other community groups and private groups to use these fields and it would extend that use. Um, In addition to to those reasons, it's also important to note that of 11 Tri-Valley League schools, we are only three that do not have turf. So Hopkinton, Millicent, Norton are the only three at this time that do not have turf. Um, And that's something that uh, limits availability of night games for our kids we so again we're really limited by that time but also in terms of the playing surface um, we don't always get to practice on the surface that we might be competing on so just a competitive advantage for other towns a competitive disadvantage for us Um, and specifically for sports it's really important I think to talk a little bit about our field hockey program Um, last year we were fortunate enough to relocate many of our games to Fruit Street, which field hockey at this point is predominantly being played on turf. Um, We were playing on grass and having opponents that we were hoping to play say, we're not going to come play you on grass. And it just, that was one of the starting points of my job in this role was hearing people weren't going to come play us on grass. So immediately I thought this this isn't right for our kids. We need to figure something out. Um, and I know a lot of other people were, were talking and chattering. And so um, it was just one of the many reasons that we said we really need to explore what this would look like for our community. Um, but we also certainly want to be competitive within our league and have state-of-the-art facilities um, and also just allow our grass fields, which are beautiful and can be beautiful time to rest because at this point they don't have the opportunity to rest the way that they should as those of you who have lawns at your house you know how that goes it's a big job to maintain grass Um, and if you have if you're planting seed but people are running on it all the time the grass isn't really going to germinate so that's been something that we a challenge that our maintenance crew has been up against is saying okay we're doing everything we can to maintain our fields but it's hard when we can't allow them the rest that they need so that's another point that that has been really emphasized especially by our maintenance crew um Another thing is the revenue generating opportunities through community and private use obviously I know that um when you hear the number associated with potentially putting in these fields, a lot of people have questions and, and some concerns about that, uh, but also learning that there is a process that would allow um, uh, the that would allow us the ability to offset future costs um, both for replacement and and potentially adding more in the future so that if you see um, if you go over to Medway High School or Medfield High School at night nine thirty at night people are still on fields um, and they're getting almost $200 an hour um, in some places to rent those facilities. So it's just, it's something that we'd be remiss not to mention. Um, And just in general, the, as I mentioned, the -the state-of-the-art facilities that we hope for our student athletes, our students, our community to have, and to have pride in pride in those facilities. And right now, so much work has been put into them and so much work is being done. But as a community who is doing so much and who has so much support on so many different levels from our school, our library, our just all the different projects that are happening in town, it's something that as a committee we feel that we we owe it to both our athletic programs and our community to to bring this forward. So that's why we say why turf fields now. Those are some of the big reasons that that we came up with. So just to really quickly uh, talk about the project phasing, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I know Kathy's going to discuss this a little bit, but um, at this juncture, we are, we have worked a lot to try and say where should we potentially put turf if we're going to get it Um, and so for those of you who are familiar with our field field three is the stadium so that's where our football team plays here and there we have soccer night games Um, at this point that field is not the ideal dimension for a sport like women's lacrosse you can play men's lacrosse on it but not ideal dimensions due to runoffs and different um, different things that you need to make it ideal Um, and also our track at this point 
still has some life on it. So in order to really do this project and we thought what we thought was the best way from both an availability standpoint and what was most fiscally responsible was to look at the back two fields. So that would be fields four and five. You can see back here. So if it's down below where the stadium field is. Um, and as, you, again, Kathy will talk about this a little bit more, but it's a, it's a very large space that would be able to accommodate a number of fields. So what we as a committee have looked at is starting with a phase project and starting phase one being turfing fields four and five. And then hopefully in a few years after generating some revenue, getting our usage up, looking at potentially um, perfing field three and redoing the track around it um, to make an eight lane track which is again an ideal size for our, the track so eventually we hope to put an amenities building at, at field three just to create the type of atmosphere that you would hope for a community event a game um, what a, a space to rent out you want certainly in a ticket booth and things like that for those of you who have been to any of our games on field three um, getting in can be a little challenging knowing where to go not not a clear entrance so just really trying to fix the logistics and operations behind what's going on also is something that we've thought about so so looking at it in a in a three-phase project with four and five hopefully looking at that first f field three next and then potentially an amenities building so really quickly this is just a um, a quick overview of the field use and demand um, you can see the way that we broke this down was by assuming about a three-hour slot per day per team um, and so during the week Monday through Friday we're limited until about 6.15, 6.30, depending on the time of year. Um, so, so what we did for the fall and spring is we just looked at the number of teams that we have to accommodate, the hours needed per week, and the hours available. And as you can see, the hours needed exceed the hours available, hence the need to rent out Fruit Street um, and use different spaces that might not be ideal for practices or games. Um, then what we did was we did the availability that would exist per week if we had turf. And it, you can see that it would exceed the usage needed for the middle school and high school, therefore allowing that opportunity for both um, community and private usage, which would be, again, we want it, we want, if this is something that people are in support of and goes through, we want this to be a community space, not just something associated with the schools. Certainly it would be on school property um, and, and games and practices would be held there, but an opportunity for community groups, outside groups to, to be able to come to a place that, they, that they're really proud of. Um, so it would allow for that increase in availability which, which would give more groups the opportunity to hopefully use the facility. Um, so the timeline, we talked a little bit about this and I won't go into too, too much detail. I know Kathy will touch on this too, but as I mentioned back in July of 2016, the school committee approved a feasibility study to be conducted on fields four, five, and three to look at what what the project could potentially look like, the feasibility of it. Um, the committee was established. They have sat through many, many, many meetings. Um, bouncing ideas off of each other, coming up with potential problems, hopefully finding solutions, trying to think ahead about many of the questions that would come up, um, maybe tonight, maybe at our, our last forum, which we had back in January, um, so that we can address those and make sure that our community feels heard and feels that this isn't something that is just an assumption or that we're saying, we need this just because we need more fields for our high school athletic teams um, that we've brought all these people together and to really work together to say do we need this why do we need it what questions might come up what concerns might come up and how do we get ahead of those so not because we want to just have the answers but because the questions and concerns that come up are real um, and we want to make sure that we are acknowledging those so um, that's been a lot of the work behind what the committee's done in addition to just looking at what the plans um, the plans will be that you'll see tonight. So um, up to this point, lots of meetings, lots of permitting, design, as you can see. Um, it also really important to mention that as a group, we have submitted an application to the um, Conservation Preservation Commission to see if there could be any funding 
in that regard, and that's something that that commission cannot fund the actual carpet, but they can fund other aspects of the project if they if they so choose. So we thought it was really important for you as a community to hear that we are exploring other avenues of funding and aren't just asking for all of it. Um, you know, it, in May at, at the election or at, um, at town meeting, but that we we feel that we owe it to you as a community to make sure that we're exploring all the other potential funding options. So that's in process right now. Um, as you know, we're having our public forum, and as we move forward, hopefully we'll we'll look at some construction documents, planning, um, and eventually get to town meeting. And, and the hope, uh, if if things go through, would be to begin construction in June 2018. So we have put a lot of work into that and have worked really hard to get to the place that we are now, but we know that the work doesn't stop just by presenting. The work continues at, at a fast pace and with a lot of hours. So um, at that, at this point, that really try, gives a background of, of what we've done without going into too much nitty-gritty detail, um, but hopefully giving you a good overview of it. And just so that you actually have a picture at this point of what we're really going to be doing, I'm going to hand it over to Kathy to talk a little bit about our current layout and, and the work that she has done through Gale Associates. So thank you so much for your time. I'll hand over to Kathy. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Um, again, my name's Kathy Herbal with Gale Associates, but I'm also a Hoppington resident, and um, uh, my heart's in this project. Um, just to my, um, I'm here just a few minutes to familiarize you with um, the existing conditions that we have out at um, Field 4 and 5, as well as um, to, to give you a preview of what our proposed project um, involves. Um, this is, I, if you're on the Hopkinton Athletic website, um, you've probably seen this that just kind of dictates where um, the, the various sporting events are. Um, again, as Dee said, field, uh, track and field sits right here. We've got the middle school, the high school, and field four and five just sit down the slope. As you recall, the high school kind of tears down the back hill. Um, and um, field four and five, it's um, mo used, um, mostly used for baseball, softball, and soccer, please. Uh, again, this is just an aerial, just to zero you in. Um, north is to the up, upper part of the page. Um, this is the, as you come around, heading towards um, Hopkins, you know, coming around the Loop Road. Um, the, you've got the parking lot here. The site sits just north of the Loop Road. Um, and again, to the west of the track. Next, please. Um, so just a, kind of a blow up of the site, our existing conditions. Um, the site is um, grass fields. As you know, we have existing baseball and softball. Um, the field currently now sheet flows and drains um, by sheet flow um, to the westerly direction up along um, this nor um, western edge where we actually have um, wetlands up in this wooded area and we also have wetlands down in this area. Um, we've delineated those wetlands. Um, they've been mapped, um, been incorporated um, into our design. We are not doing anything proposed within the wetlands, but we are, do have some impacts to some of the buffer zones from those wetlands. So we have filed um, full design plans with the Conservation Commission. Um, we opened the hearing on October 2nd, and um, the hearing's been continued October 3rd. We'll be going back, um, addressing peer review comments and um, moving that um, process forward. Um, the field, this is just uh, give you some typical spring pictures of the fields out there. You can kind of see the muddy footprints through here. And um, I know my kids have played soccer on field four or five on a fairly wet day. And unfortunately, the fields, you know, have been used a lot. Um, and um, the soils get compacted. The grass gets um, destroyed and it, they just don't come back and the water tends to sit and unfortunately um, limits play on those fields and when it gets really wet obviously canceling events um, so what we're here for today is to you know try to alleviate some of that as well as um, Dee said you know meet some of the other community um, opportunities so what are we proposing um, first off as Dee said phase one just so people understand can look at the board um, this is our track and field project, which is we're considering as phase two. As Dee said, we're going to hold off on that, hopefully for the future, um, because the track, basically, the circumference and the radiuses of the track are too small to fit large fields in, in the middle. So, uh, these fields, these tracks 
were back designed 20 some years ago most of the radiuses in this point were one hundred four foot which give you about two hundred feet for your field which was perfect for football stadiums and things along those lines unfortunately now the sports are lacrosse soccer and those fields are bigger they're you know one ninety five and then plus two o five and such with safety run outs and things along those lines so those type of field you know one of the first questions is you know can we put them within here um, to make you know just do the stadium um, and they just don't fit but in the meantime we also know we have a track that still has three or four good years to it um, so um, again we're going to wait and hopefully you know in a future phase you know kind of revamp the track increase that field area so the the obvious location was you know where can we get the most bang for our buck which is when brought us back to field four and five um, Field four and five, um, basically, you know, we're proposing baseball, softball. We've kind of tweaked the softball a little bit for um, sun orientation, just seemed to work better. Plus, you can also have a softball game and a baseball game at the same time. We've made sure um, the infields and such work. Um, we also can get all regulated. Um, we're regulated by the MIAA, which is the Massachusetts Interscholastic um, athletic Association, as well as the um, National Federation of State High Schools, they dictate, you know, how big the fields can or can't be. Um, and what we've done is we've designed this in such that we can fit all recommended dimensions for um, football, soccer, um, lacrosse. Just keep a note, women's lacrosse is the biggest field out there. It's 195 by 360. It's actually larger than the men's lacrosse field. Um, so what we've done is, you know, made sure that we can fit that within this location, all those various fields, plus with the safety runouts, um, and some of the other things that we're proposing along with this, obviously, to um, as we put in the synthetic turf, we'll be improving the drainage system um, that goes along with that. Um, we'll be improving some ADA access to the fields. Um, right now, access comes down um, kind of this paved road that kind of follows down along to the softball. We'll be upgrading that as well as over by the parking lot. We'll be putting in all um, ADA access type um, pathways um, for handicap requirements. Um, we're going to be we're proposing athletic lighting so that we can optimize the field use. Um, right now we have um, eight to ten light poles um, that's still kind of being evaluated um, and uh, we're also um, proposing some portable bleachers that can be moved around um, based on certain events as well as maybe a potential storage building but based on the program as of today um, we're looking at a, a range of um, 3.8 million dollars um, keep in mind this total square footage of turf field is about a hundred and well it's about 165 thousand square feet um, just a regular turf field is about 80,000 square feet so we're basically getting two fields um, in the location and what I did uh, what's illustrated on these next couple slides is just to give you a sense of um, how these all these sports fit on this field we've looked at soccer it just gives you a sense and what I do want to explain to you too is you'll see um, this is lacrosse but um, you know you've got the, the the lines you can see the edge of the field overlapping with the baseball keep in mind that this baseball field is all turf you know our turf will have a curb all the way around the field um, even though the, this will be turf it's just going to be a different color that outlines the the infield areas and the baselines and such um, again field hockey field hockey is the smallest field we've got it's great to fit it in and one of the things that we'll be evaluating hopefully as things move forward is um, what fields would be more permanent in the turf or whether they'll just paint based on seasons because um, you can put lines permanent lines in and that's something we haven't quite you know gotten into that gets done more you know as we get closer to the end and then obviously um, we've got football um, um, practice in there as well so what you see here is um, we just took the opportunity okay you know we talked about community involvement and um, what you see here are five small fields that we've kind of just laid out that they could fit in this area for, say, a youth soccer event. Um, these we were able; these fields are about 180 by 105, which fits all U10 and under um, soccer teams. So you know, it'd be great for you know small tournaments and stuff. And there's many other combinations, but just to give you a sample of you know what they could could do out here. And then just hitting on the, the phase one, um, you know, our focus right now is phase one and, 
getting that going. As I said, we are currently permitting through the Conservation Commission. Um, the reason it says permitting phase one and phase two, um, the drain, we talked about community involvement and um, what you see here are, are five small fields that we've kind of just laid out that they could fit in this area for say a youth soccer event. Um, these we were able, these fields are about 180 by 105, which fits all U10 and under um, soccer teams. So, you know, it'd be great for, you know, small tournaments and stuff. And there's many other combinations, but just to give you a sample of, you know, what they could, could do out here. And then just hitting on the, the phase one, um, you know, our focus right now is phase one and getting that going. As I said, we are currently permitting through the Conservation Commission. Um, the reason it says permitting phase one and phase two, um, the drain, we talked about community involvement and um, what you see here are, are five small fields that we've kind of just laid out that they could fit in this area for say a youth soccer event. Um, these. We were able, these fields are about 180 by 105, which fits all U10 and under um, soccer teams. So, you know, it'd be great for, you know, small tournaments and stuff. And there's many other combinations, but just to give you a sample of, you know, what they could, could do out here. And then just hitting on the, the phase one, um, you know, our focus right now is phase one and getting that going. As I said, we are currently permitting through the Conservation Commission. Um, the reason it says permitting phase one and phase two, um, the drain, we talked about community involvement and um, what you see here are, are five small fields that we've kind of just laid out that they could fit in this area for say a youth soccer event. Um, these. We were able, these fields are about 180 by 105, which fits all U10 and under um, soccer teams. So, you know, it'd be great for, you know, small tournaments and stuff. And there's many other combinations, but just to give you a sample of, you know, what they could, could do out here. And then just hitting on the, the phase one, um, you know, our focus right now is phase one and getting that going. As I said, we are currently permitting through the Conservation Commission. Um, the reason it says permitting phase one and phase two, um, the drain, we talked about community involvement and um, what you see here are, are five small fields that we've kind of just laid out that they could fit in this area for say a youth soccer event. Um, these. We were able, these fields are about 180 by 105, which fits all U10 and under um, soccer teams. So, you know, it'd be great for, you know, small tournaments and stuff. And there's many other combinations, but just to give you a sample of, you know, what they could, could do out here. And then just hitting on the, the phase one, um, you know, our focus right now is phase one and getting that going. As I said, we are currently permitting through the Conservation Commission. Um, the reason it says permitting phase one and phase two, um, the drain, we talked about community involvement and um, what you see here are, are five small fields that we've kind of just laid out that they could fit in this area for say a youth soccer event. Um, these. We were able, these fields are about 180 by 105, which fits all U10 and under um, soccer teams. So, you know, it'd be great for, you know, small tournaments and stuff. And there's many other combinations, but just to give you a sample of, you know, what they could, could do out here. And then just hitting on the, the phase one, um, you know, our focus right now is phase one. This is called Envirofill. It's a coated sand. Um, the second one is a TPE, which is a pelletized type, um, just plastic um, pellet. And then another one that they actually um, looked at is they're referred to as organic. They're made up of either like a cork or a coconut husk. Um, or, and, and actually they also now have um, some walnuts and stuff. The committee's been diligent. They're still in the process of evaluating what infill that they'd like to use. Um, they've been out to some of the local fields that have these various infills, um, you know, talking to their ADs and their, the athletes and, you know, how do they play and the things along those lines. And I think they have one more. They're going to go out to Littleton and see um, an EPDEM, which is um, kind of an artificial man-made rubber um, type material. And then I just wanted to touch briefly on the lighting at the facilities, how far the lighting has come. Um, the lighting at the existing field three um, is, is fairly recent, but the um, every day the lighting seems to get better. They've created various hoods and such. And um, if you can see from the picture, the lighting, there really isn't a lot of spill off the fields. It's very um, isolated to the fields. Um, 
Next slide, please. Um, once upon a time, the, the light poles used to be, you know, low and kind of shined across the field. There was a lot of glare, um, fans, players, um, neighbors, things along those lines. Um, now the poles are much higher. They shine down on the field um, and minimize that, that spillage. And the last slide is just kind of a picture that, of course, we don't have the tennis courts, but, you know, maybe what, um, maybe Hopkins will look like sometime. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to Dee. Thank you. Um, so one other point to mention is that as we also have established another subcommittee uh, working on the field management structure and what that would look like, as many of you in town know right now, we have certain... Uh, procedures to use school fields, then Parks and Rec has a different um, group that they're working with, our you know, youth soccer, youth lacrosse, it's, it's a lot of different groups and we have been working collaboratively, all of these groups, to figure out how could we all do this together so that we're all benefiting from it and it's, it's not as confusing of a structure. So it's something that is in process but we have a fantastic group of people who are all, I think, all have the same vision, which has been really, I think, unique to get that many people in a room and say, okay, this is this is a potentially really good thing that, that we're doing and that we can work together for for our community. So that would also help produce positive revenue, again, to offset future costs and just, you know, different costs that come up and hopefully long-term produce just some, some revenue. Um, so as we wrap up this portion of the presentation, we have a few breakout sessions available where you can certainly go ask some specific questions. Um, we'll have uh, Kathy Herville will be in the back right corner over here talking about some of the infill. She has some samples. Um, for anyone who has finance questions or revenue questions, you can kind of stay right in this area. And then over here in this area, we'll be talking about um, some of the community partnerships. So feel free if you want to go to one of the specific areas and ask some questions. We'll come back in a little bit and talk together. Also, don't forget you have your index cards. So if a question comes up that you want to ask or you want to, you need to leave but you want to make sure it gets addressed we you can certainly drop one of those cards we'll put the box up at the front of the room and you can do that so we're going to take about 20 minutes to 25 minutes now to go to those breakouts feel free to walk around to any of them um, and then we'll come back together as a group thank you